Hey gang, Masada Ayoub here for the Masterclass series at Wilson Combat YouTube channel. Uh, what our friends and colleagues at Wilson Combat have asked me to address today is some specifics of hand placement and primary hand grasp, what we sometimes call a master grip, and with particular emphasis on the subtleties of thumb placement. There are a lot of fine instructors who I respect today who are teaching the vertical thumb, sometimes called flag thumb, high thumb, sometimes called 45 degree thumb, straight thumb, probably the single most common among the champion competitive shooters, and finally, what some consider an old technique, but is enjoying some renaissance today, the low thumb with the thumb curled down. Let's look now at the specific strengths, weaknesses, and applications of each of those. With the flagged thumb, one big advantage is it keeps the thumbs away from the slide stop. It's very common with the popular straight thumb hold for one or another thumb to override the slide stop and prevent the gun from locking open when it's empty or in actual firing as the gun moves, the thumb inadvertently hits the slide stop lever and locks the slide open in mid-cycle with round still in the magazine. The th flag thumb is particularly good when you're in a retention position here. If you're in like this, it's possible for the slide to hit your own body and clothing and foul the gun after the first shot. You'll find also if the opponent is straight on to you, this angle sends the bullet skidding through the edge of the rib cage and does not give you an effective stopping hit. This rotation here with the felt index of the thumb and the drumstick of the thumb against the pectoral muscles clears the slide so it can keep working even when you're wearing heavy clothing. And it uh, also angles the gun muzzle more center line to the opponent's body which should guarantee a more effective stop. Every technique has strong points and weak points. One of the downsides you'll have, you can see this is an unloaded uh, Wilson x tac is any pistol with a grip safety, a 1911 like this one, the Springfield XD series, the high thumb may fail to activate the grip safety and the gun may fail to fire. The reason is, as you're watching this, take your hand right along with mine. Look at me through the web of your hand. With the hand up, you'll see the web of the hand is pulled back away. But as the thumb comes forward and more forward, you'll see the web of the hand comes more forward. And what happens there is now we've better guaranteed that the grip safety will release and the shot will be fired when you need it to be fired. The next technique is the 45 degree thumb, sometimes called high thumb. It worked particularly well with systems like this Beretta 92F series, the older Smith & Wesson pistols, and uh, some of the older Rugers or the Walther PPK. With a thumb at 45 degrees, if you are mandated to carry this gun on safe, with the lever down being safe and the lever up being fire, the U.S. Army with the Beretta M9 and the U.S. Marine Corps mandated on safe carry, and so did the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department for their thousands of officers when this gun was standard issue there. To try to flip it upward, most people try to do a movement like this off the median joint of their thumb, kind of like they were shooting marbles, and there's not enough strength there to reliably off-safe the gun. By running it straight 45, straight 45 degrees up, running it all the way from the base joint of the thumb to the tip of the thumb, sort of like you were running up to the, in the direction of the ejection port, you pretty much guarantee that the gun's off-safe. Now, if you were an LAPD officer, who when this was standard issue there, was required to carry off-safe, or US Air Force required to carry off-safe, you wouldn't need that to uh, off safe the gun per se as you drew. But one thing we found with this type of gun across the different brands, as you came over to work the slide with the conventional American overhand technique, there was a tendency for these hands to push the gun on safe. And now it took you a while to figure out what was going on before you could get off another shot. You had to remedy the situation. If you've been always shooting with the thumb up here, it guarantees that the, uh, the pistol is going to be off safe and just as you wanted it and ready to fire. That could also occur in a struggle for the gun when the opponent's hand grabs it like this. The 45 degree thumb is what I used when I was mandated to carry a gun of this type. And I learned to draw, pop the safety, leave it there, and just bring the support hand in like this, thumb coming forward and under the firing hand thumb. The next would be the straight thumb. If you look, uh, look directly at my hand, with the thumb straight, you see how it tends to lock down the wrist. 
And now, as the other hand comes in and does the exact same, what we've got is we've gone from here to here. There's a straight line going all the way down the, the radius, the upper bone of the arm, right to the tip of the thumb. It tends to lock the hand and the gun arm in a forward position. What people, where people go wrong with it, if you look carefully, you'll see the thumbs tend to override this thumb safety. And it's possible to either prevent the gun from locking open and telling you when it's empty, or as recoil movement occurs, for the thumb to kind of bounce that up and lock it open when you don't want it to in mid-fire and mid-magazine. So if you're gonna shoot straight thumbs, make sure the forward thumb is clear of the slide stop, and keep your, your firing hand thumb off the gun unless you feel you need it to hold the safety down in a 1911, and simply bring it over onto the firing hand. That way you'll have all the mechanical advantages and as they say in machine shop, you're keeping your fingers out of the working parts. Finally, the fourth position would be with the thumb curled down, like in a fist. If you look historically, uh, some of the top shooters of old shot that way, and some of the uh, very good shooters of today and instructors of today still do, uh, Bill Wilson himself, for example. The reason is it makes the hand stronger. Uh, take your hand so you can watch your hand and mine. Leave the thumb up and with all the other fingers, or if you wish, just the three grasping fingers and leave the trigger finger out. Crush grip as hard as you can and mentally measure your strength. Now still crushing and still measuring, slowly bring the hand down and you'll feel the below you bring the thumb, the tighter the grasp is. That's how much strength you're throwing away when you shoot with the thumb high and how much you're gaining with the thumb down. Good news with it. Let's say you were shooting a revolver like this uh, Smith & Wesson Model 60. If you've been shooting straight thumbs with your full-sized auto pistol, your grasp is gonna end up looking like this, and the thumb is in dangerous proximity to the burning gases that'll be coming out of the barrel cylinder gap. And that uh, danger increases with the power and pressure of the gun and the load. It can cause severe damage with some of the big magnums. Thumbs curled down keeps everything out of the way. The downside, there's always a downside that you have to watch for. My hand, average size adult male, is barely uh, uh, large enough that I can pull the trigger of this gun without the thumb blocking it. But you'll see by that point, by the point of the shot, the finger has touched the thumb. Had I been wearing gloves, had my thumb been a little bit bigger, it might have stopped here and literally blocked the shot. Basically, with the thumb down grip the way I do it, the thumb is curled down, this hand comes in mirror image and goes thumbprint over thumbnail. Now we have that same effect with both hands, maximum strength exerted to stabilize the small gun, the light gun against the very heavy trigger pull. So each of the thumb positions is gonna have strengths and weaknesses and so far as shooting. Part of it, as we said, is gonna to adapt to the size and strength of the hand and the shape and the controls of your given pistol. Now, until now, we've been talking about strictly hand-to-gun interface while shooting. For self-defense, there's another element you have to look at, close quarter combat and a possible struggle for the gun. If the opponent attempts to disarm you, your start is going to be whatever your firing position was. If the invisible man was holding me at gunpoint, I and most other people trained in disarming, would begin with a lateral strike like this to get the gun off midline of our body as we simultaneously pull our body off midline of the shot. Then, with a hard strike, we're going to come in with our full body weight behind it and try to rip it up the arm of the original holder and bring it back to us. To see how thumb grasp uh, interfaces with that and may affect that one way or the other. If you have a dummy gun, use that. If you don't, triple check that your regular pistol is unloaded and use that. But now we're gonna take the gun like this and we're gonna have a little attack of multiple personality disorder. This hand will attempt to disarm this hand. Start with the thumb in the vertical or flagged position with as hard a crush grip as you can. As this hand comes in, it's gonna meet very little resistance. The reason is the thumb being raised away from the side of the pistol has sort of left a gate open and there's very little resistance there. Go to the 45 degree thumb, you'll find it takes a little more effort to peel it out of the hand, but this hand will still be unable to retain it. Go to the straight thumb shooting position that so many of us uh, have had good luck with. 
It's going to be the, uh, the disarmer will have to work a little harder, but they're going to be able to lever the thumb out like this. And the downside of it is the the angle is such it can dislocate or break the original good guy's thumb as it comes out like this. Interesting thing. Go finally to that last technique with the thumb curled down and the same hard crush grip. And you'll find you can hang on much, much longer. Two things are happening with that. One of them is we have most effectively closed that gate on the side where the hand grasp is open. But the other thing, let me set the pistol down and just we'll do it with bare hands. Take your own hand like this and with high thumb, Try, see if this hand can push it over and see if this hand can keep it from pushing over. And you'll find that it can't. 45 degree, try to keep it straight toward the target as hard as you want. It's still going to come back. Straight thumb will take a little more effort, but it's coming back. Interesting thing, curl the thumb down. You'll feel it touching your middle finger. It would probably be touching your middle finger tip if you were holding the pistol. Hold hard. Pull here as hard as you want. And you'll find in most hands, it's almost impossible for this hand to dislodge this thumb. It simply greatly strengthens the skeletal muscular support structure of that part of the hand. That element and one other is why personally, I went back after spending a lot of time with all the other techniques to the old thumb down position. The other reason was top masters like Rob Latham, who he and Brian Enos in the early 80s were the ones who popularized straight thumb for two-handed shooting and Bill Rogers at uh, Rogers Shooting School, one of the greatest of our shooters and instructors, will teach you straight thumbs for two hand, but thumb curl down for one hand. And when you ask them why, they'll both tell you it's simply stronger. When you've lost half the flesh and bone you had to stabilize the firearm, you need every ounce of strength that you can get back out of the one hand that you have left. Each of us is gonna have different needs, different priorities. The size and shape of the gun and its controls may be a deciding factor. The size and shape of the hand may be a deciding factor. The individual needs may, or even long-term habituation, may be what decides it for that one individual. Looking at different techniques, it's, it's not a religion, folks. It's an evolving art and science. Doctrine is a word that has no place in it. Find what works for you for the particular task. A different task may require a different technique, just as a different task may require a different tool. Whether it's tools or techniques, the more of them you have in your trick bag, the better a job you'll be able to do with any specific task. Thanks for your time, folks, and I appreciate your coming to the master class on the Wilson YouTube channel. Hope you subscribe. There's a treasure trove of good vetted information there. Train hard, stay safe.